One of Yongle's most trusted subordinates was the eunuch admiral named Zhang He, who lived from 1371 to 1433. Zhang He was the son of a Muslim soldier from southwestern China who had worked for the Yuan dynasty. At the age of 10, Zhang He was captured and castrated and sent to serve Prince Zhu Di in Dadu. Castration was a common practice throughout the ancient and early modern world. It was used in China to try to ensure loyalty by eliminating the constant conflict that the Chinese believed people would have between their families and their duty to their ruler. In addition to uh, becoming a eunuch, Zhang He was educated in the prince's household, and he became a loyal soldier and later a general. Zhang He actually helped Zhu Di to depose his nephew and to take control of the empire. And in recognition of his skills and his loyalty, the new Yongle emperor appointed Zhang He to be admiral of the Ming fleet and sent him on seven expeditions between 1405 and 1430. Zhang He's first expedition left China in July of 1405 with 62 large ships called treasure ships and 200 smaller ships and 28,000 soldiers. These flagships called treasure ships were 425 feet long and 160 to 180 feet wide, over six times the length of the 65 foot caravels that the Spanish and the Portuguese would use at the end of the century in the Portuguese exploration down the coast of Africa and then in Columbus's voyage across the Atlantic. China's four-decked 1,500-ton treasure ships had very shallow drafts to allow them to navigate in rivers and estuaries. And they had watertight bulkheads to prevent them from sinking if they were holed. Their nine masks were up to 200 feet high, and they were fitted with rattan rather than canvas sails. For many centuries, the voyages of Zhang He were not really featured in histories of China, even within China itself. As historians have rediscovered these expeditions, the superiority of Chinese naval technology has challenged the belief that Western nations were the first to really establish maritime power. One of the most interesting questions about Zhang He's voyages is, why did they end? China didn't establish offshore colonies, perhaps partly because there was so much territory available on the empire's northern and western frontiers. China's rapidly growing population was a ready market for most of the empire's farm products and manufacturers. And the international trade that interested China really already found its way to the empire without much effort on China's part. And unlike European kings, the Yongle emperor was not interested in evangelizing Confucianism or Buddhism to the rest of the world. The Spanish and Portuguese, in contrast in particular, would later want to convert the world to Catholic Christianity, which became not only a goal, but also a justification of their conquest and their colonization. Among other places, Zhang He visited Bangkok, Malacca, Burma, India, Sri Lanka, Hormuz, Jeddah, Mogadishu and Mombasa on the east coast of Africa. And of course, as a good Muslim, he made his pilgrimage to Mecca. 95 foreign delegations visited the Yongle Emperor, and he had so much correspondence with so many foreigners that he actually had to set up a college of translators. When the Yongle Emperor's son and grandson inherited the throne after his death, Zhang He's expeditions gradually became less of a priority. After a final voyage, Zhang He died and expeditions were halted and the fleet was retired and ultimately burned. Ending China's navy was one of the major changes made by Yongle's descendants. And when you think about it, one of the turning points of world history it's interesting to try to imagine how world history would be different if the Chinese had maintained their control of the South China Sea and the Indian Ocean. But the burning of the Chinese fleet left a power vacuum in that region, which in the 16th century was filled by Japanese and Chinese coastal pirates, and then, of course, later by the Portuguese as they made their way around the bottom of Africa. 
Finally, shortly after Yongle and Zheng He's deaths, China was challenged from the north again. Sixteen years after Zheng He's final expedition, Yongle's great-grandson, the sixth Ming emperor, was captured and held hostage by Mongol raiders in 1449. So before we continue with that, some more questions for discussion. What do you think was the most significant element of Zheng He's seafaring missions? Secondly, with such a commanding technological lead, why did China turn away from the outside world and suspend this exploration? And then finally, what might the world look like now if the Chinese Empire had continued along the lines begun by Yongle? and Zhang Hei.